Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are, welcome back. It's another chapter of the Deflating and Escaping Atheism Saga. I, as usual, and Max, here with the Escaping Atheism team, and over here with me is Rob from Deflating Atheism. Say hi, Rob. Hey, hey. Now, I just wanted to take this opportunity to, once again, publicly thank Rob for the new Escaping Atheism logo. Thank you very much for it, Rob. I really, really like it. No uh, and other people like it too. So thank you much for that. Now that's going to uh, be on T-shirts. It's going to be on everything. It's it's going to be. You're going to see kids walking walking in the mall wearing wearing T-shirts. I need. Uh, it's all a matter of having enough energy. I need to start a Zazzle store or something, and I don't want to put that on it. I just. It's a matter of finding the time and energy between all my other commitments. In any case. Yeah. Thank you for that, and and so we're going to do something a little unusual today. Again, please remember to give us a like. Please give us a subscribe. Please, we could also use your financial support. You know where to find us by now, I hope. Um, and please make sure to subscribe to Rob's channel and to the Max Colbay channel, which is where we put the escaping atheism material these days, usually. All righty. So we're going to do something a little different today. I've wanted to talk to I mean we've been doing stuff together for like a year now something like that um, uh, and I remember I was just utterly delighted when I found the deflating atheism channel because I thought dear God thank you there's at least one other <laughs> there is at least one other I am not alone <laughs> And and I've I've been a fan of your videos ever since. And I've never actually just sat down and I've often thought we sh I should just sit down and interview you one of these days. Believe it or not, everybody, we don't spend that much time outside of uh, of these shows together talking. I really know well, no, we don't even know that much about each other to be quite honest. So yeah, no, no, and it's been an interesting relationship, and it's been fine that way actually. Because then you know who knows we might hate each other, but yeah. If we no, that's not. That's not no, probably not. No, but still, it's it's them. So I'm I'm actually very curious. I'm just going to interview Rob here, and I really want to ask him the big question. I know what got me into literally taking on atheism as a social force. It has to do with my own background as a as a former atheist, and then seeing what's become of atheism and how it's gone from being something you would find as an occasional nerdy or odd trait in a human to um, a, little, a little with some interesting people I always knew who were atheists. I was an atheist. Most of my friends were. No, not, not most, but a lot of them. And it went and became something really viciously political. And I've seen that happen in my lifetime. And that would be the short uh, way, reason I'd say I got into it. But yeah. now, Rob, I'd like to ask, what, what, what is it that got you interested in this? Well, I, I just want to make a comment on what you said. I mean, that's it's right there in your name, escaping atheism. That it's it's almost like like escaping from a cult or something. It's it's an ideology that needs to be escaped, which speaks yeah. to your own experience. Yeah, and, it really is. It's an ideology that needs to be escaped, especially today, because it's become this this nut job ideology. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, well, I just want to say. Uh, uh, a, I think a lot of people have this misconception. I am not a member of, of escaping atheism. We're, we're, we're two different things. No, no, we're not. He's not. And so I, have, I, I haven't and, managed to absorb him into our board collective yet. It's, it's <laughs> well, I, I like it that way because, because it's two slightly different names, I, I really think. It's that, like, mine is just taking these uh, particular artifacts of, of, a, of kind of either atheist cultural expression and just kind of poking holes in it. That's deflating atheism again it's all right there in the name so so we have kind of uh, different aims and different techniques but why why i think max and i work so well together and certainly i've done hangouts with christians where i may agree with what they believe we just don't work that as well together to be you know, to be quite honest but what unites uh max and i is a sense of urgency oh well, there is that yeah yeah and a sense of yeah, because uh, I'll tell you another reason it happened was because I began running into religious people who were being terribly harassed by atheists, and nobody seemed to give a damn, mm. and uh, that really bothered me too. 
Um, weren't, weren't you saying something like that happened with you that kind of activated you? Uh, yeah. I have several stories to tell from others. I'm curious if something happened with you. <laughs> yeah. Well, no, I, I kind of brought, I had in my mind, and this is just to tell, I was planning a video where I had kind of like a story time where I would tell people about two incidents that happened in like 2014, 2015. That kind of spurred me on to making the channel. And, uh, but I'm not that good at just like, you know, turning on the camera and just, just, you know, spieling. So, so I'm glad Max had this idea because it's something I wanted to do too. But can I just say the takeaway, the takeaway, if, if, if the viewer cuts off the video now, I mean, this is what I wanted to take away. My big regret with my own channel is that I did not start it 18 months sooner. So, mm. I mean... I know, I know there are a lot of like Christian apologists watching and say, oh, I'll get around. No, really, make your own channels. Get, I mean, get on this, you know? Get on this. Yeah, we need more of this. We yes. really do. And that includes being willing to stand up and get clubbed by the atheist clown car downvote <laughs> brigade and all, all, the, all the hostile comments that you'll get seeming to come from thousands of directions at once. It's a, it's a, we call, I call it the atheist clown car brigade. They come in yeah. like, like a swarm of, of, of idiot locusts just barking shit about sky fairies and prove your extraordinary claim and blah 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 fairy tales, Bronze Age. Yeah. And, and that, you got to block like a few hundred of them before they get the message. And <laughs> it just, yeah, but we do need more people. Yeah. So, and I, I've had Christians complain to me about it, and I'm like, well, you know, you have to fight. You, you, you just do. Yeah. Uh, there's, a, well, there's the Christian, Christian tradition of total non-resistance, but uh, uh, that's that's not the actual Christian way through most of history. And that's that's another thing is I think a lot of Christians. I was just speaking uh, to a girl uh, in, in comments about this recently uh, in, in the comments to the to the uh, Deflating Atheism Facebook page. But uh, I think a lot of Christians have this attitude that atheists will be atheists, and they just they're just kind of resigned to this kind of behavior. But the thing is, the thing you have to be aware of is that these people want to drag other people into hell with them. So. <laughs> It is part of your great commission, not just to sit back and, and, and just say, oh, well, atheists will be atheists. You know, they're, they're going to do this thing. From an entirely secular perspective, it's clear these people are highly corrosive to the body politic as an organized political force anyway. Yes, uh, you're going to get mad. You're going to get mad and say, well, this nerdy kid over there, he's just an atheist. And like, yeah, yeah, but those nerdy kids get preyed upon by a cult network now. Yes. And and recruited and given talking points with phony history and phony psychology and bad life advice. It's a, it's an organized network phenomenon now. If you fly in the atheist badge, you need to realize you're associating with something real specific that is an organized cult movement with recruiting talking points, recruiting methodologies, forums, books hate propaganda that they pass off as, as history, hate science that they, the phony science they pass off that isn't real science, um, and they want your kids. Mm. And and this is happening. It's just, all you have to do is go and look. You can you go and like, find, huh? Sorry, I remember like when this whole thing first kicked off and you had like the rational response squad weren't they like advertising in like tiger beat magazine or something like that it was yeah cool. yeah yeah um um you know here i mean just here, i mean there's recruitment material all over the place here's just one how to persuade a christian to become atheist there's an entire there's an entire oh, yeah, the wiki how <laughs> a wiki how okay which is a wiki is how a very a very respected source by the way for a for a lot of information and there's your instructions on how to convert your a Christian friend um, they will by the way call it deconverting yeah that's their phrase deconverting which is another way of saying they're going to convert you to their atheistic worldview. And it's, it's a specific brand of atheism that they're selling, too, mostly narcissism. Uh, uh, I'll look up, I'll show people a book that they should know about. Here is 
a manual for creating atheists by one Peter Bogosian. Uh, uh, it's specifically a recruitment manual. It's specifically a propaganda manual. Um, it can be shown to be false in a number of areas, but in any case, you can see it's actually using sales techniques, like the kind of techniques that, that car salesmen use on you to persuade you to be an atheist. And they're, they're especially going after young people on this. And that's, that's really what the New Atheist Movement was about. And if you don't just wake up and go, wait a minute, okay, it's now more than anything. It's, the, it's become this cult phenomenon. I know I, 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 people get upset at us because, you know, you have your actual 15-year-old atheist who's confused or 20 or, or whatever, and the idea of God just bewilders him. I know I, I was that guy. Um, but it, it, it's a cult movement now, and they scoop people up, and they, they run dirty on people, and they're frequently bullies. Atheists are some of the worst bullies on the internet. Yes. And if they can't hear take hearing it too damn bad because they really are um, obnoxious, hateful, nasty, yeah. running impacts, um, trying specifically to convert kids. I mean, if I wanted to take only the the most curmudgeonly kind of get off my lawn attitude towards this, and they say, "Well, what have atheists ever done to you?" I could just say they asked up my uh, internet experience. They're making the internet less pleasant for me because a person can't even go on Facebook and say that they went to church without somebody posting some invisible sky fairy comment and you know beneath it. So yeah, on that level, they they've. They're literally the bottom I've people. Seen, I've people seen, you know, boxes I saw it. a guy on my Facebook feed and one of my young friends, so-called, I have too many, obviously, who aren't very good, but good. To, I have a guy in his 40s who was in traction and asked people to pray for him. And yes. a young atheist I supposedly knew started yelling at him. Yes. And I'm like, son of a bitch, this is a toxic political force. It, it 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 needs to end. I'm sorry. I, I, if I was an atheist, I'd want to be like the anti-atheist atheist guy. Yeah. Um, but if I was an atheist. I could not imagine behaving that way towards people. I could not imagine behaving that way towards people. I'm sorry. Go ahead. And again, pure, from a purely uh, secular perspective, even even if you can only think of it this way, I mean. If you have kids out there who are being taught that the amazing atheist is a superior mon mind to Thomas Aquinas, that should alarm you just as a uh, culturally and philosophically uh, you know, aware human being that this is a force of anti-intellectualism. It, it, it is an intellectual, uh, just spiritual, moral disaster. Yeah, it really is. I mean it when I say the ever that Hinduism as a religion makes more damn sense. It does. <laughs> it's I mean Judaism, Zoroastrianism, freaking Wicca. I I mean really, uh, there is no sense at all to this atheist madness that's that's inflected the culture. It really I, has. I, I just add something on this that's I'm just kind of spouting off at the mouth here anyway. But I, I believe uh, what may appear to be two conflicting things, I kind of like your opinion on this. Uh, because I believe on one hand, yes, new atheism is a spiritual, moral, intellectual disaster. On the other hand, I think the whole thing walks on chicken legs and the slightest breeze could just knock it over. Like yes, seriously, I, these I kids over the book will come collapsing down. I think so too. I mean, there, the, it's very clear where Hollywood and where acad where the academia is, which is dogmatically anti-religion at this point. Uh, practically every movie, with some exceptions, there and there are some honorable exceptions. Um, even what you see in video games, domineeringly nasty on religion. But people are thirsty for religion anyway. It's abnormal, in fact, for people not to be religious. You can't kill religion. Uh, from a secular perspective, atheists ought to hear that and realize that you cannot, even when they try in places like China with some of the most brutal tactics imaginable, and of course the entire state education system preaching the atheism, it doesn't hold, it doesn't stick. It's not natural for kids to, to not believe in the spiritual. And guess what? There's reasons to believe in the spiritual, even if you don't accept the Christian accounts. 
It's just, it's abuse to be inflicting this on kids. I brought this, this is on the Escaping Atheism forums, we got, or the, the, the Facebook team, we got this posted. I'm not sure who did it originally, but I like it. Yeah. Atheists have this whole atheist pose thing going of, uh, you know, how Christians used to tell atheists to shut up, which, by the way, is a myth for the most part. Um, and I like this, and I really like the attitude here. When you've got an atheist yelling at you to stop your God talk, tell them no. Straight up no. And you're not required to be particularly polite about it either. Really, read your scriptures. You're not. Yeah. There's an awful lot of things said about unbelievers who act like pigs and swine. Um, um, and about not even wanting to, not even associating with people like that. Uh, you're not even required to be their friends if they're going to be so nasty. Of course, as a Christian, you want to try, but I mean, really. Uh, anyway. Um, and there's, there's an enormous sense of entitlement on the part of the atheists uh, that they just feel that their opinion should, should be given some sort of privilege. Like, check in the comments to, like, any uh, Ben Shapiro video. Again, I'm not advocating any uh, political position here, but Ben Shapiro is a conservative. He is a, an Orthodox Jew, and, and conservatism has traditionally been often allied with, a, a, you know, Judeo-Christian religion. But then you go into the comments, and it's like you have these atheists, you know, Oh Ben, just keep your religion nonsense out of this. You're driving so many people away. It's like I'm sorry, the religious believers are still 95 percent of the population. Okay, if Ben wants to talk about religion, he wants to talk about his faith in God. He should, by all means, uh, go ahead without fear of alienating this very this small, noisy contingent. Yeah, in fact, what I'm going to say, and I do, I do want to get to your story about the oatmeal. I want to know about it, but I wanted to share it with people, but. Um, I, 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 now, and now I forgot what I was about to say, um, except that... I was talking uh, about politics, Ben Shapiro, conservatism. Oh, yeah. Uh, it's real common to hear atheists say that no one is religious anymore. And what that means is that you live in a bubble, especially if you're Canadian, Australian, or British. Or if you're on, on, on one of the left coast, uh, on the east or west coast bubbles like New York or California. Uh, no, in reality, in all these places, religious people are all over the place. Some get along well in your urban, highly educated enclaves by hiding their religious belief. I know, I talk to them. Uh, in other cases, they're in the lower classes beneath you that you don't much interact with. And uh, that, that's, that's what's happening there when you say nobody's religious anymore. In fact, what a lot of you mean, whether you mean it or not, is that nobody who matters is it religious yeah. anymore. Nobody I who's just, intelligent matter or who matters is religious anymore. And that's a stinking attitude that comes off of so many of them. It's just, it's part of the problem. And that's where I think uh, new atheism has been uh, particularly booming it is among well, this is going to sound really snobbish, but it's a, it's among people who may not have otherwise been exposed to atheism in the past, which is people who who don't have a whole lot of book learning or people who who grew up in the flyover states where they may have never even met an atheist before, and so <laughs> I don't know. Speaking for myself, it's like when when an atheist leaves a comment uh, on my on my channel or something, and then like they live in like they live in like a, a Missouri or something. I go into their page, you see these beautiful green rolling hills. Like, what the hell is wrong with you? <laughs> but uh, right. there is the Christian bubble that's on the other end, which you'll have Christians from places like that where religion and, and religiosity are still pretty open and normal, and yeah. they'll think we're exaggerating the problem. No, we're not. And the deeper you get into the internet, the more you'll wind up seeing that. By the way, I actually looked at the uh, the, the Pew research on religious affiliation. I, I, I kind of like this. We could just keep on going like this. But I looked at the uh, research about, about religious affiliation in the United States. And I think there is this 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 kind of myth of, of this kind of monolithic secularism uh, 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 on the Eastern and Western Poles. But I mean, like atheism and agnosticism in the entire United States is like 3% and 3%. In New York City and LA, it's like four percent and four percent. So it's a little more, but not still not uh, the majority. But then, then you go, then you go to Seattle, and it's like ten percent. So something's going on. 
Well, I mean, there is a little social engineering going there too, since the high tech firms we all know now have had an anti-Christian attitude and agenda uh, in their hiring, as well as, you know, anti-white, anti-male. Sorry, they just have. Um, and the anti-Christian turns out to have been part of it too. We know that from a lot of what we've seen. Yeah. Um, what we've also seen is, is that a lot of people will just shrug at what you would call mob behavior on the internet um, when it was atheists doing it to Christians on, on the assumption that somehow because Christians are the majority in the United States, you're allowed to do any damn thing you want to one. I've seen that attitude coming out of atheists, which is like a double boomerang BS, like, oh, because you're atheist, you, you, you have that privilege to be nasty to people now? It's, it's, yeah, yeah, it's more about mob justice. Um, what I, I really do want to get to this. I, what what happened with you and the oatmeal? I have an image page from the, from Imager up that I put up here. Uh, well, now now the oatmeal is something I used to be a big fan of the oatmeal. Um, I'll even bring up the oatmeal dot com. I, I, I did they ever get that uh, that that Tesla museum done? I was all excited by that project uh, when it came out. <laughs> you got the web squatter page. Uh, what was that you said? Uh, oh, I was just saying the oatmeal comics by Matthew Inman. Uh, I, I remember the last I had checked in on him, he had been about to build a museum for Vladimir for for oh, uh, Vladimir, uh, Tesla, uh, a museum for Tesla. I can't remember. I, I, his I think that was after after I I, I kind of uh, very conspicuously unsubscribed. Well, what happened? I I assume that the I mean he's part of that, that late '90s, early 2000s atheist nerd culture, which was always kind of quiet atheist, as I recall it, with yes. with um, with some mix of religious people. But I noticed the atheist, the younger atheist contingent, like from the oatmeal, was starting to get more aggressive. Yeah, uh, he didn't seem to have a real problem with that, though. To me, yeah. Well, what in comics, I'm sorry. Well, but what happened though? Because it sounds like he's a little nastier than what had set you off. I'm curious. Yeah, well, he had had a series of, of kind of comics that were kind of needling religion, uh, needling belief in God, uh, in in the most kind of furtive way uh, possible. And then he gave a speech at a convention where he basically mocked. Uh, belief in God, and and he gave us a little talk about Gibber's Crest, and uh, you could go up, probably go on YouTube and find this little talk he gave to this to this very self congratulatory skeptics group, and uh, and uh, all, all the people were laughing at, at his Gibber's Crest, like which is basically uh, uh, the uh, which is basically uh, the uh, flying spaghetti monster, just kind of tweaked a little with with a few different changes. And they're all just laughing in a, in a very self-satisfied way. And he this also, right here, Bob Fast West, 2014, man, Matt yeah. Inman, Jibbers, Krabs. Okay, so let me guess. It's just, it's just another atheist rant. Uh, because he thinks he's brilliant because he thinks all, you, all religions are crap. Is that the bottom yeah. line? And yeah. he thinks he deserves a medal for publicly saying so? Yes. <laughs> and and okay. in front of an audience of people who all feel like they deserve uh, medals because just he just gets like this disgustingly self-congratulatory laughter for, from everyone in that audience. Yeah. Bob yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Uh, atheists, it's time someone gave you the dad lecture that previous generations of fathers would give about how even if you're going to be an atheist, for God's sake, have some manners and stop pretending you're the smartest person in the room wherever you go, please. I mean, really. Um, <laughs> I don't even have to watch this to know what it is. He's in. He's no, another, you know. You can tell. Metal. You can write it yourself at this point. Yeah. He, he needs a medal just for being an atheist and for the brave, brave yeah. courage, the stunning, brave courage, and come out and see and speak of his complete ignorance on the topic of religion. And then half, halfway through this video, and we're not going to watch this because it's, it's just crap. No, but halfway no. through the video, uh, he, he suddenly pulls out this assertion that there is no evidence for Jibber's craps, but he believes because of faith. And that's uh, just this uh, horrible just misapprehension of what religious faith is. He's an idiot, so, in other words. That was on top, I'm sorry? 
an idiot and a bigot then basically yeah a bigot yeah we were just yeah. completely uh, religiously and philosophically illiterate and this was all on top of a series of of kind of much like uh, another guy I started swinging at uh, a science enthusiast he he doesn't put it front and center but he just puts little needling comments here and there along the way and so uh, I wrote to him I sent him a message uh, and it was a very it was a that what you see on the on the screen there it's not that my first uh, message to him this is a Facebook messenger by the way. Uh, was not very well written because I wrote it on two hours sleep, and it was just like it was just like I was just like doing laundry that day, just getting things done. Right. And so I wrote that. I did not expect anything of it, but then he wrote back, and so and so I wrote response, and then he was. I knew he was like setting me up. He was just saying, "Oh, I'm I'm triggering you," and. <laughs> it's atheist setup. It is. Yeah. Oh, you, upset. you seem really upset about all of this. Yeah. And the the you can keep scrolling down. So I I keep saying my things, and my responses are actually much better written than my original uh, uh, post was because I'd gotten a good night's sleep at that point. But yeah, and so then then he goes to the very end, and and you seem really steamed up. See, so he's setting up his punchline, and then at the end. He has gibberish crafts. Gibberish crafts, the lawyer. Yes. Okay. I'm getting steamed up like a steam lobster. Do you get it? Do you get it? So, uh, yeah. In other words, he was being the typical snotty millennial. Sorry, it does seem to be generational and part of this cult that infected nerd culture that made so many nerds horrible assholes. By the way, I'm calling you one as a nerd myself. My God, man. I never thought of. Uh, the oatmeal as an asshole bully shithead, but holy cow, what an asshole. Um, now, I, I think it's important that we get to what makes this... Uh, I see what he's doing because I watched how they run their internet games on people. He, yeah. he's, he's the big time celebrity, of course. Um, so he's going to taunt you from his place of superior power. And he's going to do nothing to even engage the possibility that there was anything wrong with anything he had to say. Yeah. Um, and uh, any any chance at engagement like, well, what did you think I got wrong? Uh, not even a conversation, because he thinks you're an inferior human being, and it's not just you. This is how young atheists now think it's cool to behave. And it's just unbelievably nasty. It, yeah. it, I grew up in nerd culture. I'm older than him, obviously, and uh, I could never. I remember when religious people were nerds were normal. Now they get ostracized and picked on. Um, it, it it makes me ill. Um, it's like guys like this just think. You know, it's like every high school bully that bothered them. Well, I'm going to get them back now. I'm going to be an atheist. And I'm going to lord over how much smarter I am and how morally and intellectually superior I am because I'm announcing to the world that I think all religion is bullshit. Yeah, well, I think it's normal for teenagers to go through a phase where they feel like they are in possession of some sort of clandestine wisdom and everyone around them is so dumb. The thing is, is that the new atheists have given those kind of teenagers a kind of too perfect kind of home. Sorry, I just spit out there. But yeah, uh, so now uh, we have these kind of adults, superannuated uh, toddlers, children like uh, uh, Richard Dawkins, allowing allowing their fans to just be mental mental adolescents uh, well into their 20s and 30s. Yeah. They're basically yeah. embedding the most nasty, uh, shallow, superior tendencies of adolescence. Yeah, yeah, I've said it many times, and I mean it. Atheists are bullies, oh, and uh, uh, and and true to form, for most bullies, they're pathetic cowards in most cases. Um, now, Max, I'm, to, I'm sorry, I'm going to ask you to scroll down to the bottom of this. Oh, sure, sure. Of the imager page, okay. because this is no, uh, yeah. Scroll all the way to the bottom, all the way to the bottom, all the way to the bottom. Okay. Oh, okay. This is all that's on the uh, the imager page. Sorry, was there more? 
No, well, the thing is, is that I said it had 177 views. It did not have 177 views. It got it got half a million views in 24 hours. Half a million views in 24 hours. Yes, because without okay. telling me, without telling me what he was doing, he uploaded it to Imager and, and put it on on his page. And uh, what I did not know, and it was like what you were saying before, where they all descend like flies with their stupid little uh, invisible sky fairy memes. They descended en masse in, in, into this comment section, and it was like 98% atheists. It was like me and maybe like two other people. Like it's 98% atheists. And what I didn't realize until much later is the reason for that is because it got reposted on the Richard Dawkins Foundation for Science and Reason page. It got reposted on uh, Jerry, really? Coyne, Jerry Coyne's page, uh, Why Evolution is True. It got okay. put on so we got, got to be a circle jerk beat up that you got cyber mobbed by atheists. That's yes. what happened. It, you got it, cyber all their, all their favorite hangouts, yes. Yeah. And this is how the big name atheists behave. Like smug, arrogant, bullying assholes. Yeah. By the way, some people don't like my use my swearing. Well, if you're a Christian, you don't like my swearing, turn it off. There's actually a long-standing debate among Christians on swearing. I know where I stand. I'm addressing the vulgar culture. And one of the things I've noted about atheist culture, and it is atheist culture, is they swear as a virtue signal. If you're willing to say things like, you know, shit, piss, fuck, cocksucker, motherfucker, tits, um, that's supposed to be a virtue signal that you couldn't be a good Christian. Yeah, well, maybe I'm not that good a Christian. I'm not afraid of vulgar language. Christ hung out with prostitutes, thieves, and tax collectors. You think they didn't swear around him? Yeah. Uh, swearing's a class mark. You memorized Carlin routines during your uh, atheist days, yes. Yes, I did memorize George Carlin routines. I was a real atheist, boys and girls, and I really am here to tell you. I'm not even going to talk to you about Jesus. I really am not. Really, read some goddamn Plato. Um, but stop being such a moron about religion, because really, it's embarrassing. And it makes you just uncouth as fuck. And it just does. Oh my God. I had to, that's, I mean, because that's what the new atheist craze was, was to popularize it with young people. That's why Ed Fazer, for example, and David Bentley Hart and some of the others have wrung their hands for years saying, why are these new atheists not listening? They're just putting out the dumbest stuff. And yeah. we, we point out why it's dumb and nobody's listening. It's like you're talking to other academics and smart people. They're talking to our children and our grandchildren. They're doing it through the media and they're doing it through their books. They're doing it through these foundations. It's 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 an aggressive cult movement. I, I, what proof do you need that I can't show you? It's an aggressive cult movement. Um, now, without without uh, somehow uh, taking away from our sense of urgency, I believe you and I are of the same opinion that the new atheism phenomenon has plateaued and is receding. And, and I believe that I believe, uh, uh, and we have data to back this up that Gen Z is, is performing an about face on on this whole matter. But you know, as long as the substantially more religious uh, greatest generation keeps dying, we may not see it a, a turnaround in absolute numbers for years. But I, I do believe there there is a a a reaction to this. There's a rejection of this. That, that oh, there is, yeah, without question. And that's happening, by the way, in Europe and uh, yeah. other places too. Again, I, I, I warn anybody who's like sitting up there in Canadian, for example, oh man, I've met me some snooty Canadian, Canadian atheists. Yeah. And yeah. they don't know about the, the religious subculture that's larger than theirs that's still <laughs> there. And that talks about them openly. And I was just also talking to somebody in, in, in uh, California the same way. His family's lower class and struggling. He's religious and he can't stand the smug atheists, but he hides yeah. it. He hates it, but he hides it. Yeah. Um, so even those of you who are uh, sitting there, no one's religious anymore. I don't know anybody is religious. Yeah, you may just be one of those snoots who has a Christian friend who doesn't know it. Or some other religion. Again, I'll keep saying it. Um, yeah, and that's uh, the thing is like I can't tell people about my channel because I know it's gonna it's gonna it's gonna create an argument because despite what atheists say, it is the religious person, it is the Christian who is stepping out into a minefield 
when, when they say I'm against atheism, right. I believe this. That's right, and because especially because a, this is the this is the little little carny verbal misdirection trick they use. So atheism is not a religion. Therefore, the atheist is free to bladder yes. his opinions as as he wishes on these matters, and that's okay. But if you speak from a religious perspective, you're doing something offensive and wrong. Mm -hmm. Well, no. Atheists either need to learn to shut up about their so-called lack of beliefs and leave the rest of us alone, and you know we'll we'll have a relationship with God, and you just be all by yourself doing whatever you're doing. Um, I was about to make a crass joke, but I won't. Uh, <laughs> I can't imagine what that would be. But yeah, uh, something involving furries and and. Oh, well, like, but my, anyway, my, uh, no, that's that would be rude. Just sorry, but, Max. My okay. mind doesn't even go in that in those directions. So yeah, you're, you're on your own there. The, well, act, I, the activist contingent I, defines what it is to be an atheist. Even if you're going to be a non-believer, I suggest you just say, I'm not religious. That's what I did. Actually, when I was an atheist, I was still an atheist. Um, and I announced, just don't call me one of those. I don't want to be one anymore. And it's because I had been cyber mob yeah, in a similar yeah. way um, by the scuzzbags, uh, now associated with Free Thought Blogs. That was my first run in. I had many other run-ins since then, including efforts to deconvert me. Um, and ugh. anyway, um, it's real, guys. And the fact is, is that atheists uh, either need to learn to respect the beliefs of others, or they need to learn to get um, lack of respect back, because nobody really is obligated to respect an atheist. I'm sorry to break it to you, but no one is. Yes, yeah. respect is earned. Number one, respect is earned. You know, we can respect your basic rights as a human being um, from our Christian perspective, um, but we're not required to be nice to atheists. We're really not. Um, I, I'll give a long list of citations from the Bible. Um, now, on the other hand, do unto others as you'd have them do unto you. The atheist who's polite and not a jerk, fine. You know, don't have to be rude to him. But when they're rude to you, you don't have to be nice back. That would be the, my big sermon to every Christian or member of any other religion, really. The atheist has no particular lock on reality. He has no particular lock on science. Yeah. Even if he has a science degree, he has no particular lock on science. Um, he has no particular lock on reality, and he has no place to morally condemn the beliefs of others. That's that'd be the last thing I point out to anybody else. Even even when some atheist tries to tell you about this or that atrocity supposedly committed by Christians or Jews or whatever, it's like, yeah. And on what basis do you morally judge us at all? Yeah. What if my religion did teach genocide, which it doesn't? But they often accuse us of having a religion that teaches genocide. Yeah. What if it does? Why is genocide wrong? Go on. Tell me if that's the case. Why am I not advocating genocide there? Uh, the atheist has no justification against genocide, except he feels that it sounds bad. Um, well, anyway, now I'm ranting. Um, I, I think it, it's significant that you have uh, a manual for creating atheists on, uh, up here, because I think that's, that's a good example. Oh, wait, let, let me just uh, go on to what you were saying. I'm sorry, I had to get some water here. But uh, to the audience at home, uh, uh, when you encounter what I call the weekender atheists, who are guys who are not not like the YouTube guys who just like live for this, but like the weekender atheists who, who've seen a thing or two and now they think that they can pose as being intellectually superior because they could say something about invisible sky fairies or something. And you encounter them a lot on Facebook. The guys who who would say something underneath, you know, pray pray for my friend here, and I say, well, why you know why are you congratulating the doctors? I call those the weekender atheists. Often, all they need, <laughs> and this is not going to sound Christian at all, often the only thing they need is to be smacked down for the first time. Yes. I've seen yeah. it happen so many times. They're not yeah. expecting to be contradicted. No one has ever contradicted them on any of this before. Show them how, how painfully ignorant they are on philosophy, on religion, uh, on science, just point out, bam, 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 you're wrong here, you're wrong here, you're wrong here, you're wrong here. Yep. They have I can guarantee you 95 
out of 100 times, they have never encountered anything like that before. That is enough a lot of times to shut them down. So they're not, they're not going onto other people's Facebook pages and preaching their atheism anymore because they've been smacked down. They've learned their lesson. I know it doesn't sound Christian, but I've seen it happen so many times. Now, we like I can give you numerous examples of the Bible. One of my favorite is answer a fool according to his folly. Let's see, think himself wise. I, I note again, yes. Christ literally said, don't, you know, throw your pearl pearls to swine and call unbelievers pigs and dogs. Um, I'm not saying you should always behave that way, but there is a time and a place for that sort of language, especially if you're the personality who's got the type for it. There's a real reason some teach, good teachers are hard on people. And I will notice that Jesus was hard on people a lot, by the way. Yeah. Um, and it's all simple and... Well, yeah, I mean, his own best disciples. And no, no, none of us is perfect, but... Uh, no, really, if you don't give the bully uh, a, a poke in the nose, he may come at you with a gun later because history shows us what this kind of behavior leads to. It starts yeah. with jokes, and then the jokes get, get harsher and less funny and more serious. And, and then the harassment starts, and the career assassination starts, and the whispering campaigns against you start. I've had it all happen to me. Um, and it can oh, yeah. it eventually yeah. become mob justice, and it yeah. happens in form now but we've seen I've talked to multiple Christians it's happened to mob just for being Christian it's happened to me a couple of times now um, and there's no reason to think that won't play out in the real world it's playing out over the world right now it, yeah in the world right now people are getting killed and I know people who've been beat up for being Catholic it's not funny anymore um, and if, if you can stop the aggressor by making it clear that like the Crusaders who took the stand <laughs> at, at Vienna or at Lepanto, I mean, I'm not saying this is the same thing, but you kind of stop thinking that being a Christian means being a wimp. No, it doesn't. It really doesn't. Um, so there. All right, that's my rant. You got anything else you want to add? This seems like a good stopping point. No, well, uh, I also have another story. But, yeah, I think it's significant you have a manual for creating atheists up here because I think that's a good example of, of – how atheism, I think there a lot of them are frustrated because atheism hasn't performed to their expectations. I think <laughs> in 2006, they really thought they would be much further along by this point. So yeah. this, this, this was a book that was published in 2013, and Peter Boghossian was talking about he would create the 10,000. And the 10,000 were a group of, of street epistemologists who would be roving the streets converting people into atheism by basically following a script. Yep. It's, basically yep. a and it's a sales thing. script. It's a sales script <laughs> yes. using standard sales methodologies. So yeah. he tried to recruit the 10,000. And this was this was all, all the buzz on all the atheist stuff, but it ended up just being a dud in a real world. So uh, he, you can still go to his website for the 10,000, and you'll find about 250 people signed up right now. And of those, I think there, there are, are about 10 who are actually doing the street epistemology thing. So, yeah, he gets, yeah. Yeah, 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 he gets glowing press all over the planet yeah. as if he's part of a mass populist movement. Um, but he is having an impact, and his talking points especially are all over the Internet, and it's all such horrible crap. I feel sorry for the 19, 20-year-olds caught up by this Peter Bogosian fraud. He's just another cult leader. He's just another, he's a Deepak Chopra of atheism. No, I may be too hard on Deepak Chopra. Um, <laughs> I, 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 maybe he's a Richard Simmons. Or I, I don't even know, man. He's just That's another cult there, leader. Like Richard Simmons like that. Uh, yeah, no kidding. It seems rude to make such comparisons. He's bringing you into a cult. And what he's selling you is that you're the rational one, unlike all the other benighted humans who are not rational and have surrendered logic and evidence. And, and it's not hard. To, it's not huh? hard. To the psychology on it. They are preying on people's insecurity. They are preying on people's vanity. Yep, and their narcissism. It's yes. true. Um, oh, you're the smart one who figured it out. Yeah. yeah uh, no, I'm sorry. No. No, I believe you, me. I've, I was an atheist a really long time. No, 
um, even if I were not a Christian, I would not be an atheist. It's, mm. it's, it's dumb, especially not this kind of atheist. It's dumb. Oh my God, it's the dumb. It's a big bag of nothing. It doesn't make you smarter. It doesn't make you more scientific. It doesn't make you ra more rational. It doesn't make you more evidence based. It doesn't do. It doesn't make you brave. It doesn't. Oh my God. But he'll sell you this book and and other stuff too. And you can go pay to see his lectures while he yes. gives you a better life through atheism, dudes. Wake up! It is a cult movement. Just <laughs> it's what it is. Okay. So that, I, mean, I mean, yeah, these guys, Richard Dawkins, all these people, they're profiting monetarily off of exploiting people's insecurity, off of exploiting people's vanity. Yeah. It's really not difficult to see through this. And they, they are some of the biggest bullies on the internet. And, uh, you know, a lot of them, a lot of the mid-level players from uh, the TJ Kirk, Sargon of Akkad, and a few other levels have all been caught out. They're the kind of people who will take money just to do dirt on someone's name. Mm -hmm. You can go out. There's price lists on dot onions, basically, in the in the in the in the in the deep web, the dark web. Um, I get mixed up between deep and dark, but on the dot onion pages, uh, you can pay to get somebody's name smeared. And the fastest ones that do it are often people who call themselves skeptics or atheists. Why not? They have no moral center anyway. So doing dirt on someone for money, why not? Well, screw that guy. He's an asshole. I don't like him anyway. Um, they do that and they have informal networks when they do it and the big name players will play it. You just told us about how the oatmeal and Jerry coin and a whole bunch of folks did that to you. Yes. They didn't even tell you they were doing it to you. And, and uh, by the way, he never asked my permission public. to make this public. He never asked my permission to make this public. I got a message from uh, someone on my, on my friends list saying, Oh man, I mean, th I think he said like it had been viewed 200,000 times at that point. But it ended, like I said, the total views on my channel is like 330,000. But this the guy. Oatmeal is, the oatmeal is run by a total dick. A shallow yeah. dick. A shallow, hateful little dick. Huh. Oh, okay. He had no well, concern. I'm going to send him a tweet about stalked or something. He had no concern if, if, if I would be stalked by, by atheists or anything. He made it public in any case. No, oh, yeah. He blocked out my name, but, but I mean. Yeah, no. So how atheists would ever ever hurt someone? Yeah, right. Yeah, there, I, there's a, there's a reason I'm only Rob in these videos. Yes. I I mean, really, the the smug, arrogant, bigoted condescension that comes off of these people. Um, yeah, it's it's loathsome and it's real. And I heard too many stories like this. I'd had enough. Especially, I experienced it a couple times. But I saw it happening to others, and I realized it wasn't just me. Um, atheism is just this malevolent force, and they scoop up the vulnerable and teach them this vapid ideology that takes them nowhere. And it's so sad. All right, I think we've been going on long enough. Did you have any final thoughts there, Rob? Uh, yeah, well, how are we doing on time? Do you know, do you know what the we time are, We are about uh, f uh, 50 minutes in. Okay, okay. Yeah, then, then I guess that, that's, that's good enough. Oh, we can come back for round two of this because I want to talk more about it because as much as I enjoy making the videos, I want to see more people doing this. Yes. I yeah. know these conversations are happening in churches and I've seen some other stuff coming up, uh, but there, there needs to be a lot more talk like this. Even if you don't like our approach, maybe you don't like the swearing, maybe you don't like the brusqueness, whatever it is. No, there's a real need. People need to speak up because atheism is, is it's, they're bullies. And they yeah. go by the name secular, they call themselves skeptics, they call themselves rationalists. All you have to do is get skeptical about them. Yeah. And, and look at what they mean by rational. And what they mean is that whatever they personally happen to think at the moment is what's rational. Um, and they're bullies. And they, and they recruit kids. Yes. And uh, so this is no longer a confused people. These are people running from a script. From prepared talking points yes. with, fake, with fake history and fake science people who recruit with fake history and fake science telling you that they're going to lead you to a better way and to enlightenment that's the definition of a cult kids and that's and what this is we've seen this movie play out before we saw it in revolutionary france we saw it in the soviet right. in hungary in albania in china 
in North Korea. I know how religion. this movie ends, okay? They lie about religion. They think it's for the deluded, the crackpotted, the mentally ill, the mentally inferior. Um, they work slowly to erode the, your rights away and respect for you in, in, as part of the civilization. Um, and it, it has eventually, in many places, led to death because yeah. they're lying about the history of religion straight up. Yeah. And, and teaching, not just teaching disbelief or lack of belief, but teaching that religion is evil and yes. needs to be wiped out. Where does the end point of that come except for deciding, deciding it's time to kill you some Christians? Or at least, right. you know, destroy their reputations and make sure they never have any success in life or whatever. Uh, I mean, I made a video about this, but yeah, talk about just, just uh, self-congratulatory laughter among atheists. There is a Jim Jeffries comedy routine where he essentially says religious people are holding back society and need to be excised from society, which is the exact same kind of rhetoric the, the, the USSR uh, used to exterminate uh, or Russian Orthodox priests and believers. Yeah. It's not funny anymore. It's being passed off as entertainment. It's not funny anymore. Yeah. It's truly not funny anymore. They're preaching hate, and they don't need to be stopped like I want to suppress them or make them illegal. I want them to start getting back what they give. Use the cure for hate speech is more speech, as they say. Well, Jim Jeffries, you're a hateful freaking bigot, and it's disgusting you talk that way out of your pig ignorance. Uh, I think more Christians and people of other religions need to step up and talk exactly like that to people like a Jim Jeffries. And they need to start losing friends, losing business opportunities, and, and maybe even losing a seat at the Thanksgiving table for family if they're going to act like that it's, and talk like that and treat people like that. It's yeah, truly I disgusting. This is another thing. I, I'm not going to explode it, but since this was about my own experiences. Yes, I, I had a brother-in-law who lived 20 minutes away, and uh, I went for like two years without seeing. I saw him like maybe twice in the space of two years just because he didn't want to see me. So, I mean, yeah, this does have repercussions in people's personal lives. But, yeah, I, I, I've, I've certainly paid the, I've paid the price for standing up for what I believe, and it's not going to be easy. I've Thank lost you. friends. I've lost. I've I've had in-laws who refuse to speak to me. Uh, it, it's. I mean, that's what you need to expect. But when when people say, uh, you know, people say to me and, and to you, oh, well, I don't like your style. I think you guys are doing this the wrong way. I don't like your attitude. It's like, okay, well, great. I mean, create your own channel. Do it better. What you that's think right. you should be doing? Create your own channel. Show us up. Just do it a million times better than us. That's right. If Frank Turek tells me he doesn't like the way I do it, I'm yeah. not that I know Frank Turek, but if he did, I would take that a lot more seriously simply because he's actually doing something. Yes. I, I might actually still tell him he's wrong and why he's wrong, but uh, maybe I'd listen. I'd have a reason to listen to him. Yeah. Uh, uh, really. Uh, so anyway, all right, everybody, listen, I think that's, we've gone down on long enough. We may have another round of discussion of this because I, I, I want to analyze atheism from the perspective of the rational atheist. A rational atheist ought to be able to behave better than this. Mm -hmm. All right, everybody, please give us a like. Please give us a subscribe. Uh, please give us your financial support as well as your spiritual support. We are entirely donation-driven. We don't take ads. Okay, anyway, God bless. Thank you.